This is about politics. This is about the politics of going to war and the politics of not going to war. It's in part about how we debate the merits of using force. Um, but I actually think it's more about when we even know, when we even decide that we are at an occasion as a nation that merits having a debate about using force. Hello, this is Anna Ballasone with the Castro Valley High School Olympian. I'm here with Rachel Maddow, host of The Rachel Maddow Show on MSNBC, author of the best-selling book Drift, and most importantly, graduate of Castro Valley High School. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Rachel. Sure, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for coming. First question is, do you have any favorite memories from CBHS, from the times that you went there? I'm sure I do. Wait, I have to scare one up. I don't really remember anything before I was 30, but I'm <laughs> trying to remember it. Um, I um, was really into sports mm -hmm. when I was at Castro Valley High. I was a three-sport athlete. I did um, basketball and volleyball and swimming. And so a lot of my memories, I think mostly because I just spent so many hours doing everything, are related to uh, playing sports and the sort of friendships with my teammates and all of those things. But, um, you know, it's all kind of... It's all kind of positive. I remember rally being um, inexplicable to me. <laughs> like yeah. so much stress, so much extra work, and so and what? And it's for the cheer, the yeah. loud cheering. I remember rally being befuddling. But other than that, that's about it. Awesome. Yeah. You were into sports, and why didn't you take journalism or write for the Olympian? <laughs> well, I never thought that I was going to end up in media. Mm -hmm. That was never in the cards for me at all. It's not what I was not what I was aiming at. I'm not sure that I had a thing that I was aiming at when I was in high school, but I never thought I would do that. Right. So, um, yeah, it was, a it was as much a surprise to me as I think it was to anybody else who knew me when I started doing radio when I was like 26. So um, if you had no like certain ambition from before to go into media, how did you come across that? Like, You know, I was doing odd jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I was um, a grad student. I was getting a PhD. Um, at Oxford and I ran out of money and I ran out of time before I was done with my <laughs> dissertation and so I moved back from England to the United States and I was living with friends um, and I was just literally doing odd jobs to pay the rent oh, just nice. doing I was doing landscaping <laughs> I was doing deliveries I was unloading trucks I was working at a coffee roasting plant I was doing all sorts of crazy stuff and the friends who I was living with um, they were fans of this local morning show one of those like wacky come on yeah. down crazy morning Morning Zoo, morning shows. And the sidekick on that show, the, the woman who had to read the news, who was the sidekick on the show, um, was leaving and they held open on-air auditions to replace her and I, they, my friends who I was living with dared me to go do it. And I had nothing better to do so I did it and I got the job and I started the next day. Nice. Yeah, it was really weird. It's not a career plan I would recommend. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so how does it feel to interview such important and influential people in your job like you do on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, I think that interviewing is not my best skill. Um, it's funny, I've, been, I, I've never written a book before. This is my first book. And I am the subject of all of these people's interviews, like right. yours. Right. Um, and that's not usually what I do. And I'm realizing as I'm doing all of these interviews with a lot of really good journalists that I'm not as good as I ought to be. <laughs> that I think I think that the I think the key thing about um, interviewing well is being prepared enough that you know to ask questions where there is some legitimate uncertainty about what the answer is going to be. Mm -hmm. Like you can't predict what the answer right. is going to be. Don't ask a leading question. If you know what the answer is going to be, ask a different one. Right. But also to know, be comfortable enough with your research and what you've known about this person before it started that you can listen. Yeah. So you're not just waiting to start your right. next question. Right. You're actually paying attention and getting what's important about it mm -hmm. before you uh, ask the next thing. And I'm less intimidated by the people who I talk to than I am about the necessity to get it right. Considering the major success of your book, Drift, are you planning on writing any other books in the future? No? no. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't really. I don't like writing, I don't enjoy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna have to write all day for my job and that's okay, but writing for a book. Is a different story. Yeah. And so I didn't like uh, get a book deal because I wanted to write a book and then I figured out a topic. Like I just, I only wrote this book because I had this thing that I needed to get off my chest and the only way I could say it was in book form. Right. And I, there isn't something else like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe I will, but I don't yeah. want to. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand that you grew up in Castro Valley, and then you came out as being gay when you were 17. And um, so I have many friends in Castro Valley who are, who have recently come out or hmm. are planning to do so. But 
growing up in Castor Valley, they're definitely afraid to do so, and you know they're um, wary of this onslaught of you know criticism from people or things like that. And um, I was just wondering if you have any advice for those students who are you know trying to come out and they're in a, that type of situation who live in Castor Valley now. You know, I don't know if Castor Valley now is like it was when I was growing up, but you know, by the time I figured out that I was gay, I had sort of, it sort of, I was just figuring it out around the time that I was leaving town anyway. Mm -hmm. But the prospect of coming out while I was still living in Castor Valley was absolutely terrifying. Mm -hmm. it's a, it was, for me, I mean, not a bad place to grow up, and I had a great family, and I think I had good schooling and all those things, but it was a really reactionary place. Yeah. Um, and, th and it was intimidating, and it was violent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, di I did not feel like it was safe for me to come out. Now, um, I don't know if it's still that same way, but I think regardless of how you know, reactionary or threatening your environment is, ultimately if you are a gay person, if you are coming out as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, or any other, any other sexual identity like that that's going to expose you to risk, the most important thing is that you do it on your own terms. Mm -hmm. And nobody pressures you either, either into being in the closet, nobody pressures you into coming out, that you do it when it is right for you. I think long term, my main message is that, um, and, I, and this is a cliche now, but it does get better, that if you are gay and you feel like it's really hopeless and you feel like you're not going to have a good life because you're queer, because you're different in some way, I understand why you feel that way as a teenager. It's not like that as an adult. You can have a really awesome <laughs> life as an adult and you just sort of have Evidently. to, weather, yeah, and you have to sort of weather what's hard about it. But yeah. um, you have to be true to yourself, do things on your own terms, be strong, and the best way to show up to people who are bigots are, is by being more successful and happy than those people right. in life so you can look down on them later as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and one last question. Yeah. So um, I understand that you did a commencement address at your Castro Valley High um, graduation. I did. I have blocked it out, but I understand oh, it's, really? on, okay. it's on YouTube, so yes, I know it um, exists. So I was wondering if, if you could give it a commencement address to the class of 2012 today, what would you say to Castro <laughs> Valley? <laughs> I would hand it over to you, because <laughs> obviously you guys know more. You guys know more about what it is, to, what it, what you know, what what the milieu is like there, and and what you guys ought to be aiming at. I. Uh, listen, I, th I think that there, is a lot, there are a lot of blessings of growing up in California mm -hmm. in this time with a good school to go to and with all the resources that are available to us. And the more I've traveled the world and the more different parts of the country I've gone to, the more grateful I am that I am from here. Yeah. And so having a little, I, th I think if I could go back and give myself a lecture <laughs> from when, go back to 1990 or whatever it was and tell myself something, I think I would tell myself to cool it and be a little more thankful for what we've got, because yeah. um, we're pretty blessed. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much Thank for you. It's been such an honor. You're really good at this. <laughs> thank Thanks. you. <laughs> this is great. This has been Anna Ballaston with the Castro Valley High School Olympian interviewing Rachel Maddow. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> but the way that our system is set up is that your argument should have to stand in public against other arguments on the other side. And you should have to win the argument before you get to set policy for the country. Um, I have also never, ever heard, um, and never imagined that I would hear, a greeting um, so rousing for the mention of Casper Valley High School. <laughs>